You are listening to the Bright Life Podcast, all about ways to stay inspired, chase your dreams, and find more gratitude in the highs and lows of the journey. I'm your host, Jessica Johnson. I'm a business owner, a part-time digital nomad, a self-growth junkie, a believer in other big-hearted women, and am all about sharing tips, tricks, lessons learned, and encouragement so we can all live our biggest, brightest lives. You ready? Let's do this. Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. Today, I want to talk about your selling energy. So whether you have a side hustle or a passion project, or you're starting a business, you will at some point want to sell your product or service, right? Like you will want to be able to communicate your product's value to others. And that goes for whether you are truly starting a business of some kind, or even just engaging with others in your life. And so I think this can really be applicable to you regardless of where you find yourself. And it can be something that just to keep in mind for the rest of your life, whenever you are trying to be persuasive or communicate your value to others, Um, maybe you're asking for a raise, or maybe you are just going for it and like selling something to someone who wants to buy from you. And this is something that I really learned in my business journey. And I think it's one of the things that probably made the biggest difference. Because if you're anything like me, um, maybe you feel a little bit intimidated by sales or you used to, right? Like I wouldn't say that I do as much anymore, but in the beginning, I was so, so nervous about selling. Um, I didn't want to trick anyone into anything. I didn't want it to feel like I was pushing people or, you know, forcing them into something against their will. Like I obviously had to go through a lot of those stories, Um, but I found myself trying to use the strategy strategies and tactics that other people told me really worked. And the problem is a lot of those people were not necessarily my same personality, right? And so a lot of those things did work for them. So maybe following a script line by line really worked for them. Maybe doing more of like the bro marketing tactics of, um, you know, I don't know, just like following a certain formula you use to like give your pitch and then convert to the sale and all this stuff. Maybe that like worked for them. Right. But for me, it was like a disaster because it's so not who I am. Um, And so what would happen is I think people could really feel that on the other end of the line. They could feel um, the phone line. They could feel that that wasn't truly me and wasn't authentic. And so it would, would result in this kind of funky energy or no sales. And even like severe stress in my life, I feel like I would start to break out in these like rashes because I would start to get so nervous about it. And I think my body just knew something wasn't aligned for me there. And so I started to create this kind of fear around the selling process because I was like associating sales with all this discomfort and having to be someone I wasn't and icky feelings. What really, really changed, and if you are someone who feels the same way about sales, this will be a game changer for you, is embracing your own selling energy, all right? Meaning, who are you as a personality? Like, how would you describe yourself when you're at your best? For me, I would use words like, I think that I'm very genuine. Um, I think that I am like sweet. I'm bubbly. I really care. I um, maybe I'm like a little nerdy, but like, I don't take myself too seriously. So it works, you know, like I'm not trying to be like suave and cool. Um, So those are words that for me, I could be that anytime because that's truly at my core who I am. And once I started to reframe my mindset to accept that that is an energy that can, in fact, communicate my value and can, in fact, endear others to me and even sell right on something that they're looking for and that they want, everything changed. Because all of a sudden I could show up like I was just having a conversation with someone and it removed all of the pressure to sell people because all of a sudden I was just being myself and I was sharing what I could offer. And if it was a fit for them, amazing. But I got to enter it from this place of really, truly wanting to help them, which is who I am, right? Like really, truly wanting to help someone. And if it's for them, great. And if it's not great, like, let me see where else I can point you in the direction of. 
And so all of a sudden, I think that my energy shifted. People could sense that it felt aligned. It felt true. And because I had shifted my energy around it, the sales started happening, but not in a way where I felt like I was taking from anyone or where I was forcing them or tricking them. Because the fact of the matter is I wasn't, I was truly coming at it with a sincerity of trying to help and either serve them no matter what and point them in the right direction of what truly could help them the most. So for you, what words would describe you? Like what would your selling energy be? Who are you when you're at your most authentic, when you're at your best, And can you start to believe that that is an energy that actually also works for sales? Not because you're trying to trick anyone, not because you're forced. You have to trust that everyone is their own adult who has their own agency to choose what's right for them or not, right? That's part of the equation. But I think almost just adopting a, adopting a belief framework that there's no one right personality to sell to sell. And in fact, a lot of the personalities that we think of on commercials or TV shows, like that smarmy, like salesy personality is actually probably not what's going to work to sell people anymore. Like maybe that worked back in the day when marketing was new or advertising was new, but these days consumers are so, so savvy And they can, I think, pick up on that from a mile away. And it's a good thing, right? So let that release that need for you to have to sell with a certain personality that's not yours. Instead, what is your core personality? What feels good to you? What feels true for you? And it probably isn't what my words are, right? Like everyone's a little different. They have their own secret sauce. But I really have started to believe that the more you you can be, That is what sells. Like that is what you can lean into. And that is actually what serves your people, right? Because they can feel that too. And they can feel that in that spirit, they they can get clear. They're not like waiting through all this gunk of like, are they just trying to sell me or trick me? They're just having a conversation with another human. So one question that I return to time and again, and I think my coach Lacey Seitz first mentioned this, but she has said before what's the most me way I can do this? And that's why I think you can apply this to sales or any other part of your life, but what's the most me way I can do this? So I even think of reels, like I am not going to be the person, I don't think (laughs) that's going to be like dancing on the internet for strangers, right? Like love to dance, but that's not my vibe. (laughs) Just like not. Um, And so for me, at first I was like, oh my gosh, I can never do reels because I cannot be doing these skits dancing. Like you know, with my booty out and like power to whoever, you know, can do that. Amazing. That works for them. Right. So that's great. But for me, it didn't feel authentic. And so the whole paradigm shifted when I was like, what is the most me way I can do this? And for me, like, I love to share little snippets of travels. I love to share tips. I love to share little, I don't know, fun skits where I'm just sitting and shit chatting. <laughs> right. Cause obviously I love to talk. Um, and, and connect with people too. And so that started to feel true for me. And another question I love that Sarah Blakely says, so Sarah Blakely's the founder of Spanx, you know, billion dollar brand, amazing like leader in terms of, I think really finding that balance and femininity in business. So not losing um, part of her dynamic to just a really masculine approach, but really just leaning into who she is and um, kind of how, I don't know, things come about for her, right? Versus fitting into someone else's framework. And so one thing that she said she does is after meetings at the end of the day, she goes into her office, she closes the door, she closes her eyes, and she asks herself, if no one was telling me how to do this, what would I do? If no one was telling me how to do this, what would I do? And I think that is so powerful. If you are looking for a way to do something in business, in your life, maybe it's with your kids, maybe it's with your move. Where do you move? What do you do in a relationship? If no one was telling you how to do it, what would you do? And all of a sudden, I think that invites more of your intuition in to guide you to an answer that feels true for you, that removes the societal pressures um, or social pressures from those you love, who are maybe even well-intentioned, but aren't living your life with your history and your desires and the future that you want. So returning to that, I think is just such a big one. And then a final one that I would say for sales that I love and that really shifted things for me is 
thinking of it more like a date and less like an audition. So, or an interview. So, you know how in an audition or an interview, you feel like you are the one on display and you are vying for this position, right? Like there's a, they have a million choices. You're almost feeling like you're trying to do this song and dance to get them to choose you, right? Whereas on a date, you go into the conversation, I think with both people feeling more like equals, like they both want to win. They both want this to work out. That's why they're there, right? And so that's how I go into my sales conversations a lot with my agency clients, even just feeling like I know I have a lot to bring to the table. I know that they're probably looking for a writer that can help them with all this stuff. I know that they're probably wanting it to be me, right? Versus me feeling like, oh, like I hope that they'll choose me. Like, oh, let me like impress them. Let me cut my rates. Let me do whatever it takes to get this client. It's like, no, like you want to feel so secure in the value that you bring and what you offer and what kind of partner you can be and how amazing work you can do for this person. But you also have to trust that they're looking for someone like you. They're looking for a writer like that, who is going to try that hard and is going to be that diligent with their work and do such good, amazing quality work for them. And so Now I really approach sales conversations from that perspective of just like, I'm going to see if this is a fit for both of us. I'm going to tell them about what I can bring to the table. I'm going to listen and hear what they're looking for. I'm going to see if our rates align, um, if our timelines align. And if not, I'm going to point them in a direction of someone that can help them, right? So there's just something super subtle and nuanced about that. But I think that can really be a big shift if you start to just think of it in terms of this isn't me auditioning, like like having to pull out every magic trick that I have to entertain. This is more like two companies, two adults, two people looking to see if they're a fit for each other. And the buyer really wants something that's going to make their life easier or better. Whereas the client, right? The person selling, um, the seller really wants to be able to offer a product or service that's going to make their life easier, but they're looking to make sure that the client's going to be the right fit as well so that they can actually be someone who's going to get the most out of their product or service. So that kind of made a big shift for me as well. And it also tied back to point one, which it just enabled me to be more of myself and just trusting that like, if I'm not a fit for someone, that is not something against me. That's just against the dynamic, right? Like it's not a fit for either of us if I'm not a fit for them, right? And so I think that just gives such a healthier way of going into sales and it enables you to retain so much more of your autonomy and your confidence and your kind of trust in the bigger process too, that like the right people are going to get you and vice versa. Um, And the wrong ones, that's a blessing too, because it's still keeping you on your right path and, and creating space in your life for the right person to come in, right? Like this is literally like dating in so many ways. So funny. So anyway, Um, whatever you are doing in your life, whether you're starting a business, a side hustle, you're just thinking about like the dreaming up the steps to do it, um, or maybe selling something on the side here and there. I think that starting with these can really keep you from falling into those pitfalls with sales and feeling like it's this dirty thing. And instead, what is the energy that you bring to the equation? right? To the selling energy, like what feels good to you and true for you as a person? And can that be the way that you sell? Can be that be the way that you have these conversations? You know, thinking through like, what's the most me way I can do this? And if no one was telling me how to do this, what would I do? And I just really hope that those questions guide you not only in business, but in life and just offer some kind of light in that area um, because they really have for me. And so I hope they're helpful to you. Keep at it and looking forward to talking again soon. If this episode resonated with you, I have something you are going to love. As you may know, part of what helps me create my own version of my brightest life is copywriting and content marketing. Building a content business helped me replace and surpass my corporate income to see the world while working from anywhere and to choose clients that light me up every single day. If you're at all curious about doing the same, I have broken it down for you in a copywriting starter kit, all the beginning steps you need to build your own profitable freelance business. I will link it in the show notes, so definitely check it out if you're interested. Thank you so much for being here, and I will chat with you next Thursday.